Hey there, pre-med. Are you thinking of taking the MCAT in July or September of this year? If so, it's time to register for your exam. Registration for the 2025 July through September dates opens February 19th. And there's a lot of things you need to know before registering. In this video, we're gonna cover everything you need to do prior to the registration day, how that registration day will go, and things to consider when choosing your test date. At the end of this video, I'll also discuss special circumstances such as accommodations and the fee assistance program. Let's dive in. So registration for the MCAT is kind of like getting concert tickets. Once it opens, if you're living in a densely populated area or an area next to a lot of colleges with a lot of pre-medical students, spots for MCAT dates will often fill up the day that the registration portal opens. So it's very important to be ready to go on February 19th if you want to get a summer test date, particularly if you're in areas like Miami, Boston, LA, or San Francisco. So what dates will become available on February 19th? All of the July and August test dates that are scheduled for 2025. This year that's July 12th, July 25th, August 1st, August 16th, the 22nd and 23rd of August, the 4th and 5th of September, and the 12th and 13th of September. It's important to remember that these are the last dates of the 2025 MCAT year. There will be no dates scheduled after September 13th. So if you do need to get your MCAT in and your score done in 2025, you're gonna to need to pick one of these dates. All the other dates prior to July 12th are currently open for registration, and so you can feel free to register for those at any time you'd like. If this is your first time registering for the MCAT, what do you need to do to prepare? The first thing you're going to wanna to do is create an account in the AAMC system. So you're gonna to go to aamc.org and I'll walk you through how to get to the registration portal and what you'll need in order to complete the registration. So here's where it's just aamc.org. It's not the most user-friendly of websites, so feel free to always use the search bar, but our students and residents will be our tab that we're going to use. Then we'll go applying to medical school, register for the MCAT exam. Once you get to this page, you're gonna see that there's this button, register for the MCAT exam. That's going to take you to a login page. You're going to need to log in yourself with your account in order to get into the portal system. Once you're into that portal system, they'll show you how much, how far you've gotten through the registration process. So you can see here that I have done a couple of, of the pieces, but I haven't completed everything. You're going to want to complete everything before you actually get to February 19th to register for your exam. This all takes about 10 to 15 minutes. They're going to ask you things about your background, personal information, biographic info, generally speaking about 10 minutes of your time, not too much, but you don't want to be rushing to do that right before registration opens. Once you do that, this is also your page where any upcoming exams will show up and or your exam history. You can see that the last time that I took my exam was earlier than 2018, so I do not have any scores available because it's been a minute for me. But if you have any previous exam attempts, it will also show up in this portal. Now, once you have an active account in the AAMC registration system, they'll be able to email you with reminders of the registration opening, and you'll be able to take a look at the currently available dates. So right now, if you logged in, you'll be able to see dates up and through June of 2025. So it's a great way to get a sense of where there are testing centers in your area. My recommendation is to get in there now, put in your zip code and see where the local Pearson View testing centers are that host the MCAT so that you know which testing centers you would prefer to take your exam. My recommendation is to have a list of at least three so that way if your first choice isn't available, you still have one or two other spots where you could take your exam. If you live in an area where there are much fewer areas to take your exam, there's less Pearson View testing centers, it's still good to have a backup maybe in another state where you have friends or family, just because again, sometimes those spots do fill up very quickly. Okay, so you've now registered in the portal and you have chosen your MCAT locations. Next up is the date, and that is not always an easy decision. There are three major things to consider when choosing an MCAT date. Number one, will you have enough time to prepare effectively before your test date? The AAMC, and I agree, Kate says that the MCAT takes about 300 hours to prepare for minimum. Do you have that before your test date given other obligations and everything else going on in your life? It's a great way to work backwards and say, hey, when can I do 300 hours? Number two is, is it at a time in your life where you can really dedicate and focus your energy to the MCAT? You don't necessarily wanna take the MCAT right after taking a final exam or right before a big work presentation. So we wanna make sure that you have at least that week of the MCAT test date to be a relatively gentle week, not a lot going on, at least that you can predict. And 
finally, thinking ahead, do you think you want to have an option to retake? Many students do end up needing to retake their exam even after studying hard because, again, it's a performance. Sometimes test day does not go the way we want it to. So a lot of students will choose a test date where it gives them enough buffer room to also retake their exam. The other thing to remember here, though, is that you don't get your scores back for a full month after taking your exam. So if you're looking for application cycles or things like that, it's important to talk to your advisor about when's the latest they would like you to take your MCAT in order to be relevant for the cycle that you're applying, given that we don't get the scores back for a month. A lot of my students will choose to take the exam over the summer and then have a backup of taking it in January for application of that next cycle. So that would be like August 2025. Backup plan January 2026 if August doesn't work out, and then being able to apply in 2026 right at the June opening dates. So these are all things to consider. I can't answer this for you when's the best test date for me because it's going to require a lot of different factors, including your personal life and professional life, what's going on around those MCAT dates. Do you have enough time to study? And do you want to build in buffer time to take it multiple times if that's something you think you may need to do to get to your goal scores. Now, the other thing is this is a long way away, right? July, August, September, these are far away. Maybe we don't know for certain when's the best test date. So you can reschedule your MCAT, but I want to be really clear about rescheduling fees and those dates. So we're going to go back to the AAMC to go through their rescheduling and cancellation policy. The MCAT itself is $345. So one of the things you're going to need on the day of registration is a credit card, so you can put in $345. They do not have a payment plan. We will talk about fee assistance a little bit later at the end of this video. For those that think they may qualify, definitely watch that part. The standard fee changes. Notice that there are date-related changes. So if you reschedule your exam more than two months out, 60 or more days before your exam, it's only a $50 rescheduling fee. The cancellation fee is $170. If you reschedule your exam between 30 and 59 days, it's up to 100. And then if you reschedule your exam within a month, it is $200. Here's the other thing. You cannot reschedule or cancel your exam less than 10 days out. So if you're at day, seven days before your test and you're like, I'm not feeling it, you have to either take it, no show or void. And I don't recommend no showing. You already paid for the experience. So your options are really take it or void it. That's something to Avoid if at all possible, so keep these dates in mind when you're scheduling your exam. If you're unsure when you'd be ready, my personal advice is to schedule for a further date out. So if you're deciding between early August and end of August, my recommendation would be to schedule for end of August because then you have more wiggle room with these change fees, right? Because the 60-day deadline will come up later than if you choose it in early August. So if you're unsure between two dates, I'd go with the later date. It's a lot less money to move it forward in time, closer in time to you than it is to push it back when you're already closer to that testing. All right, so making sure to have these in, in your calendar, my recommendation is once you schedule for your exam, put in the 60, 30, and 10 day deadline and plan a practice exam right before that so that you can have a metric to make your decisions about whether to keep your exam date or to reschedule. The date choice is something that I would definitely recommend spending some time considering going through the different options, but honestly, sometimes it's a vibe. Maybe you feel really good about the number 13. That's great too. So sometimes you just gotta trust your instincts, making sure that you pick the date, and again, planning out your rescheduling if necessary using our deadlines. Once you have the registration, the location, and the date, then you just wanna get ready to enroll and register for your seat. So again, you're going to need a credit card or debit card with at least $345 available. There is no payment plan, so you have to pay upfront for that $345 registration fee. You also will need a government-issued ID, like a passport or a driver's license. The AMC Exam Essentials has the full list of what they accept as a government ID. Now, why do you need the ID to register? When you go through your registration portal, I want you to double check that your name on your ID exactly matches your name that you're putting in to register because they are going to check that ID and make sure that it lines up. And if you use your nickname in the registration portal, but your full name is on your license, they will not let you test. So make sure that your IDs line up. It's a great way to also make sure that it's going to be 
an active ID and not expired by testing. So that's all great to have ready and handy right before registration. My other recommendation is to have some backup options, backup locations, backup dates. Again, once in a while, these dates and times get really competitive. So I would have like a first choice, second choice, third choice, kind of like a fantasy football draft. So expect and hope for the best, but plan for the worst if your ideal spot doesn't open up. If it doesn't, if it's all booked, they do have wait lists and notify me lists. So you can always put in yourself on notify me lists while holding another test date. If you don't get the spot that you want, they do have wait lists and notify me lists. A lot of shuffling happens over the months before test days. So definitely put yourself on those notify me lists and you can still hold a test spot at your second or third choice and then reschedule to your ideal location if it opens up. On a similar note, you can't hold two test dates at once, so you really can only register for one and then reschedule. So you can't hedge your bets and put yourself in for two test dates, only one allowed to register at a time. What to do after you register? Make sure that you have a solid MCAT study plan to get you to your goals by your test date. So put in those rescheduling fees and then map out those 300 plus hours to know when and where you need to start studying and ramping up the practice problems and practice exams throughout your prep. I recommend a minimum of 3,000 practice questions. I personally, my courses use UWorld and AAMC materials, but any work to do practice problems and good solid review. And you also wanna do a minimum of six practice exams. The AAMC does have two free exam and four paid exams available. Now, if you qualify for accommodations, you will not go through the normal registration process. You will call them and they will help you register for your accommodations. So they should give you an accommodations in your accommodations letter and email. Uh, they should give you instructions on how to register for your exam date. If you haven't yet received approval for your accommodations, my recommendation is to wait a bit to register so that you can call them and get the registration date that you want rather than having to schedule and then potentially having to pay extra fees to reschedule over two days or whatever your accommodations are. So it's very important to get your accommodations approved early so you have plenty of time to call them and get your ideal test date. To apply for accommodations, we go back to that AEMC students and residents applying to medical school and you can hit this button, apply, exam with accommodations, and it will go through all of the instructions, a pretty decent description of their review process and the conditions and application information that you need to submit. So it's a pretty robust website here. Again, to find it, you just go, applying to medical school, exam with accommodations. The other piece here is the fee assistance program. So the fee assistance program is a wonderful program that the AAMC does provide for any people who think that they may have financial difficulty paying for the MCAT and their application fees. So there are a few eligibility requirements that are listed here on the website. For example, you must have a US-based home address and you have certain income requirements. And of course, you're planning to apply to medical school. So if you think you may qualify, this open in early February, and I strongly recommend at least looking into applying if you think you might qualify, because it does give you significantly discounted fees. If you may notice, if we go back to our fees here, the rescheduling fees are much smaller for fee assistance program, and the registration only costs $140. You also get free access to their AAMC QBanks and exam materials and you get uh, free application fees for I believe up to 20 schools. So it's a pretty great program and I just really encourage students to check it out if they think they may qualify. We also offer scholarships for students who are on the fee assistance program in our MCAT courses as well. You can feel free to email us at coach at if you think you qualify. So that was basically it. If you have any questions, feel free to post in the comments below. I'll make sure to answer them and best of luck as you register for your 2025 MCAT date.